Hey folks, welcome back to Abundant Life Homestead. I really hadn't planned on going to another tractor event so soon after Portland, but here, less than a week after clearing out the fairgrounds, I found out a, a fairly local club was putting on a really exciting event today, and I just had to be here. Family things happened. I couldn't get here early in the morning. I can't stay all day, but I still had to get here, check these guys out, and check out their event. And to tell you all about today, I got my new friend, Dan Hyatt, president of Whitewater Heritage yep. Antiques Association. Yep. Dan, tell, tell us about your club. Uh, so the club started, I don't know, probably 20 years ago. Uh, my dad was one of the founding members of it. Uh, just wanted to get a group of guys together that, you know, had an interest in tractors and machinery and trucks and things like that. So uh, they started to get together and uh, they, did a few things at the fair and we still have a tractor show at the county fair and uh, kind of partnership here with Kamak Station to be their kind of, I guess you would call them a premier sponsor or backer of our club. Uh, they really back our club and we have uh, right now, we've had usually two shows here a year, a spring one and a late summer. And this winter we're gonna have a, another show here in December uh, with a lighted tractor parade to go through town. So. And then the tractors will be lit up with Christmas lights and the whole town's lit up with Christmas lights. So we're gonna do that this winter. So. That sounds like an amazing time. So how many members do you have in, in the association? Uh, I think on our member list, there's somewhere 70 to 75, I think, 70 on the member 75. list. Okay, you're gonna add one more today. Yeah. Cause I, I'm gonna join you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I really, like, I really yeah. like it. And one, one thing that really stood out when I started looking into your club when I first first heard of you guys was your yearly calendar of events. Mm -hmm. I mean, between the, the, the events that you guys put on and the events you guys participate in, the list is a full printed yeah. page. And, you know, I've been part of a few clubs. I've been familiar with a lot of clubs. Getting people involved is really tough nowadays. Yeah. But when I scroll through your guys' Facebook page, it's it's not just checking a, bark, yeah. a, a box and saying, we did this event. Yeah. You've got the receipts to back it up. You yeah. guys are doing yeah. tons of events yeah. every well, year. Well, and we think along with that, we know that as busy as everybody is, not everybody can come to everything, right. but most people can make most things. So yeah. as many events as we try to do, we're gonna have different people at every one to make sure we have things going at the event. You that, know? that way all, all the club members can be part at yes. some time, yes. even when they're busy yeah. during a big show. Yeah. We've, got, we've got little things. Yeah. So that, that, that's really, really cool. And today's event, you know, was no different. I've, I've already seen the beginning of it. You guys pulled out here with 31 tractors. Yeah. I was like, whoa, I, I was amazed you had that many show up. It was really great. Yeah. Starting with where we missed, starting this morning, what, um, what does this, this event entail? Um, so if people attend next year, what, are, what do we expect in a day of this show? So um, for the, the participants and the members that came in today and brought tractors, uh, we started out this morning, uh, Kamak Station, uh, fed us biscuits and gravy. Uh, had that started 8 or 8.30. Our plan was to start the tractor drive at 10.30, but with the weather, we had to push that back and start at 11.30, which wasn't bad. Um, so we would do the drive like we did, and then come back and eat, and everybody can visit. And sometimes, depending on the weather and what's going on, we have had tractor games in the past and done some other things, but we figured right now with the tractor drive and uh, with the the uh, foundation tractor that we're going to do here in a little bit, we probably won't do that, but there's enough, you know, everybody just kind of take time and visit and look at everything, so. Now, the, the, the tractor drive was what first got my attention. I saw a picture on Facebook of a hand-drawn map that said, we're going to drive the tractors here. I got so excited, you know. I, I live down in a pretty quiet corner yeah. of the county. I'm pretty sure my neighbors think I'm crazy because I will tra I'll, I'll road drive my tractors for fun. Yeah. And I'll go out 10, 12 miles, come mm -hmm. home. I, I love it, but yeah. there's not a whole lot of people around that yeah. do that. So I'm, I, I see that you guys are going to do that. It's like, hey, I yeah. might have found my people. Yeah. But um, so you, you mentioned the foundation, you know, you're not just doing stuff for club members. Mm -hmm. You're getting out there in the community today. Yeah. What did you guys drive, about 10 miles? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the uh, route was uh, 
Uh, between 10 and 11 miles. So. Okay, so you're, you're, you're getting out there in the community. You're, you've got a well-known base station yeah. in Kamak Station, but you're also here today supporting a charity. Yeah. Tell, can you tell us about what the foundation you're supporting Yeah, so today? we, uh, this winter, uh, well, this, this winter I took over as a new club chairman and just trying to do some different things and have some different ideas. And Shane, the manager here, said that some of their car shows, they, you know, donate to some charities. So I thought, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try something here. We're gonna, we're gonna do something. I didn't know what then. Uh, then I found the Travis Burkhart Foundation. Um, they, Travis was a young man that was in a car accident, had uh, got traumatic brain injury. Um, his, his family started the foundation and they help uh, other people. It started out with people with TBI to help them with different expenses and stuff, but now they've grown to help, you know, whatever with, you know, if there's expenses and somebody's ill and you need a hotel room or this or that, um, you know, different, different things. And they're partnered with Farm Rescue on some things to help, help people out in situations. So we thought, well, we're going to try this and see what happens. And then Mike's here. And uh, so he was on the tractor drive and he just came from, he drove eight hours yesterday straight from Boone, Iowa, from the Farm Progress Show to be here. So and I can tell you, you've got a really tough job in that. Long ago and far away, we used to organize motorcycle events for charity. And I mean, from beginning to end, it's it's stressful. Everything mm -hmm. falls apart. Everything comes together. But and then in the end, it all it all yeah. works out. So being club president and bringing something yeah. like that in for your first time, yeah. I think you've done a pretty amazing oh, we're, job. We're trying. So. so so what is it your club is doing today to raise money for uh, the Travis so Burkhart We bought Foundation? a. Uh, we decided um, to buy a uh, garden tractor because uh, you know, ev not everybody. In my opinion, I want I want everything in the club. I want old tractors, you know, to muscle tractors, to, you know, newer tractors. And I want garden tractors. I want hit and miss engines. I want old trucks. I want shiny automotive paint tractors. And I want tractors in their work clothes. I want everything. We were missing, I think in our area, in a lot of areas, I think garden tractors are a niche because they're small mm -hmm. and people can put them in their garage and they don't take up room they're not hard to haul and i think i wanted to do that plus i think with a garden tractor maybe that would give a kid you know an opportunity to oh, yeah. have something and get started so we uh, went and bought a uh, marketplace garden tractor and uh, the uh, club sells raffle tickets and here this afternoon later we're going to draw uh, the raffle ticket for the winner of that tractor and whatever money that makes it's all going to the Travis Burkhart Foundation so oh, good stuff good stuff so so yeah there we go the 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 club the event the the foundation they're supporting really an amazing show today you're going to be too late to miss this year but um, make sure you mark it on your calendars for next year i assume you're doing it next year yeah yeah we'll have one uh, one late spring here we'll have another one about this time late summer again that is like this it's our bigger of the shows here and then like i said the first week of december we're having the lighted tractor parade and the and the christmas show here and that will be all that schedule stuff will be on our facebook page okay and you are the white river heritage, white river heritage antique Association. White River, White River <laughs> yes. Heritage Antique Association. Yeah. It's almost yeah. a tongue twister. Yes, it is. But yeah, your Facebook page is where I found you yeah. guys, where I found all your information. What got my, what got me excited yeah. about being here and and even joining. So, yeah. I guess the only thing left now, show me where to sign up and where to buy tickets. Although if You're I bad. win the tractor, my wife will probably shoot me. <laughs> yes. I might have, I might it's have five, five too many. It's only five dollars. So. <laughs> Thank you much, Dan. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. you guys. And they've got a lot of tractors coming down the line. I am sorry I missed this road trip, but uh, that happens when you're a caregiver. Here we go.
First up, we got Dan Hyatt on his John Deere 3020 pulling, pulling a wagon with the kids. Nineteen fifty three Farm All M. Nineteen forty four M. MV High Clearance, not sure on the year. Nineteen forty one M. Oliver sixteen hundred. John Deere He killed it. <laughs> Farm all 300. Oliver 1655. Got a little 48 in. John Deere 50. This is a big one. Here comes Squeak on his farm all eight. Squeak. Here's a nice farm all 560. Comes another nice eight. He ain't looking. Super M, we got a rider today. Alice Chalmers D19. That's a pretty tractor. Pacematic Diesel 800. Massey Ferguson 1100. That's a good sounding tractor. Got an old Chevy truck. Can't beat the Chevy 3600. Another nice Farmall 560. 1962, Pete Calhoun. Another case 300, triple rain. <clears throat> Still coming, Minneapolis Moline G1000. John Deere 4620 diesel. That's a pretty one. Another nice farm all eight. Popular tractor. Alice Chalmers 7030. Big boy. 7080 is the biggest one they ever made. Oliver 1650. Comes a John Deere 3010. Got a couple here. John Deere R. Listen to that. Here we go, John Deere 70. John Deere 60 coming down the line. And a John Deere 3020. And tailing up the pack, we got a Minneapolis Moline UTU. Take a look at a few of these while they're stationary and see some of the ones that didn't participate in the drive. There's a Farmall 400. Super MTA, we saw a few of these guys last week. We got hiding back here, John Deere D. I 
1948 John Deere D, owner R.W. Howell. Please stay off the tractors, should go without saying. A lot of people uh, touched mine at the show last, last week. I don't mind so much with mine, but mine is not exactly a show queen. And most of them only did it when I was standing there and they were asking about it. I'm okay with that, but if you don't have permission from the owner, just don't touch the dang tractor. Ford 901 Power Master. I think we saw this one in the drive. Nice John Deere 4440. This is one that uh, the club president Dan was talking about a little bit ago. It's one of his. There's that Case 800 diesel we saw go out in the drive. Old classic favorite, John Deere B. It's one of the ones we grew up with. Right beside it, you got an unstyled B. Super M. Oliver Hart Parr. Man, I bet you that's a heavy son of a gun. I'll have to look up see what the weight is on these things. There's a whole lot of iron there. Minneapolis Moline M5. Nineteen fifty five Farmall three hundred Tom Smith of Muncie, Indiana. And we got the uh, Kamak Station Zone host fire truck. Of course, they get to be part of the show. Gene Young's 1942H. I think Gene is hiding from me. Every time I want to talk to him about the tractor, he disappears. I worked with Gene for 15 years at the log yard, or at the lumber mill. He didn't work in a log yard, although he did drive a truck. There's another H in 1949. Owned by the Glasser family of LaSantville, Indiana. Hey, they're down real close to me. Only a couple miles from LaSantville. <coughs> Farm All 560. Saw a couple of these in our uh, family collection last week, but uh, ours aren't this nice. The 1962, owned by the Glasser family of Losantville. Bosworth and Patty Smith. Another Oliver 1655 and we got a train coming. Forty-nine eight in that we saw from the road drive. John 
Deer 3010. That's when you're doing a show at uh, Kamak Station. Trains are bound to happen. This is a pedal tractor collection from the Wileys in Union City. I went to school with their daughter. She's the same age as I am. Looks like they only brought one trailer of the pedal tractors today. I think, think, I think they've got three full trailers and then some in their pedal, in their entire pedal tractor collection. John Deere 70. In 1954, Dennis Nixon of Yorktown, Indiana. John Deere R. In 1953-60. Is your guys tractors? The end one and this one's mine. This. That's Jim Brown. I'm the who's behind it. Is the A behind me? Yeah, it's the A. Yeah, the A's behind me. Thought I saw you driving the 70 earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you restore these? No. Jim Brown restored them. Jim Brown Jim restored them. them. Okay. Both of these. I've got six of them that he's done. Yeah. I've got the whole I've got the 40, 50, 60, 70, and an 80. The whole family of them. Whole family. Nice. Another Farmall 560. Pete Calhoun of Farmland, Indiana. Claude Calhoun at age 79 bought this tractor new. And drove it until he was 83 when he died. Pete Calhoun got the tractor. I'm trying to read what this says. P. Calhoun got this tractor, the fifth generation of Calhoun have drove this tractor. So that's, that 560 is a family heirloom. Case 300 we saw earlier, another Pete Calhoun of Farmland, Indiana. 1959 1948 John Deere A Richard Gillis of Eaton, Indiana Richard Gillis of Eaton, Indiana 53 John Deere 50 Merit and Rita Freer of Santville, Indiana. There's the Minneapolis Moline G1000. We saw, saw Dan leave on his John Deere earlier, but he came back from the drive on this one. He had a bit of a breakdown out there. And I believe he, this may be one that he said was his grandfather's. Bought new at the dealership just right down the road from Kamak Station. John Deere 4020. <coughs> John Deere 
John Deere G, 1950, owned by David Gowan of Muncie, Indiana. John Deere Model H. There's another unstyled B. One of the big ones, Alice 7030. Saw a couple big Alice Chalmers at the Portland show, but I don't think anybody had a 7030. John Deere 3020 diesel. And we got a Cub 127 on the back of the International Harvester truck. Mm -hmm. 